the preload came out for this abandoned app <laughs> on the PS5. <laughs> the preload is out. The launch is very soon. 8, 10, we're launching. And hopefully finally figuring out what the fuck this game is. So at this point, we still don't know if this is a secret Silent Hill or not. Man, I think it is. I really do. I, I saw... See, the, all right, look. Listen. Time listen. to jump down the rabbit hole. Listen, listen. Hello, hello. Welcome into Lighthearted Gamers, episode 51. My name is Alex Light with Sparky3, the host of this show. Hopefully you're having a phenomenal day today, whatever day you're listening or perhaps watching this podcast through our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Sparky3. Make sure to give us a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. Let's keep growing the channel. We're doing pretty well so far. I like what we're seeing. Let's keep on going with it. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed episode 50. You know, that was a big like, kind of like special episode for us. We had a couple guests on, talked about 50 incredible video games you need to play. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you have not checked it out yet, please go check it out. I know this is normally a new show, but episode 50 is one that you can always go back and listen to and have a good time. Uh, no guests today, but as always, I do have Zach here in studio. Zach, who of course is on vacation now, and you got a, you got a pretty tall challenge ahead of you this week that will either... That might make you hate a franchise. How, how are you doing? How are you feeling being on vacation? Are you ready for this challenge? I mean, I'm doing good. Vacation start off well. I mean, I'm not going to hurt from this challenge because if you haven't heard, I've decided that all my vacation, I'm going to try and attempt to play through every Assassin's Creed game, starting from one, going to Val, uh, Valheim. Oh, no, that's not right. Valhalla. Valhalla, yeah. Valheim's something else. Yeah, it is. <laughs> totally different. Um... And I mean, I started a couple days ago. I'm almost done with one because one is a lot quicker game if you just ignore the, everything. Like just do the story <laughs> missions. <laughs> I imagine going back to one was kind of painful. <laughs> oh, the free running sucks. Oh yeah, dude. I imagine it was. I imagine it was painful. You are a lot stronger than I when it comes to this. So which one are you on now? Are you are you still on one? Do you already take care of that? Are you on two? I'm about to finish one, and I'll okay. probably start two this afternoon. Right on. Two is one of obviously one of my favorites. Uh, I'm curious how far you're going to get throughout this week. I'm very curious. I mean, based on the pace with one, I should at least get the black flag by the time um, the Back for Blood beta opens and I get distracted by that. When does that open? Uh, f- Friday. Friday. Okay. So for uh, Lighthearted Gamers episode 52, we can give your we can probably get your first thoughts on that then. Yeah. Okay, cool. Right on. Well, for this episode, uh, you know, with last week being the uh, episode 50 special, we didn't really talk about any news. Uh, We are going to be recapping a couple things that went down last week, such as like the EA Play Live. Uh, We had another leak from this Nintendo Giga leak that started like last year where there was a ton of stuff that was, you know, hacked from Nintendo and slowly but surely over time more and more has come out. Like stuff like uh, the Super Nintendo GameCube. That's something we talked about in the past on this show. Uh, But there was a new one, a new leak that just came out involving a canceled Zelda game. That's kind of interesting there. Uh, we are going to be giving our thoughts on Pokemon Unite, the new MOBA that has now been out for probably about almost two weeks. I, I have dumped a ridiculous amount of hours into this game already. Uh, it is a lot of fun, so we're going to get in our thoughts on that, including a lot of data mining stuff involving Pokemon Unite. So if you're a fan of Pokemon Unite and you might be curious of some uh, upcoming playable Pokemon, we got you covered on that, as well as some uh, some other codings that are in the game that are still unknown what they are, but we can probably speculate from that. Uh, we also have some delays to talk about. A lot of delays went down, but it also poses the question for what's to come in 2022. 2022 is setting up to be an incredible year. And then uh, we also have some sales numbers we're going to be breaking down involving Xbox and PlayStation. But first and foremost, if you could go follow us at Twitter, at LH Gamers Podcast, we would greatly appreciate that. You can also follow my other podcast, Animan Plus, at Animan Podcast over at Twitter. And lastly, if you want to support us further, the Patreon is a great way to do so. Do not feel upgraded though just listening to the show is enough be a friend tell a friend let's keep growing the show all right let's start things off had a debbie downer note here uh we i kind of let off last uh, episode with this you know and i kind of went on my spiel about when it comes to this show i try to keep things positive the name it speaks for itself lighthearted gamers right lighthearted you know i try to keep it that way where people can come in have a mental vacation for an hour just relax maybe get a laugh or two get some good information good predictions shitty predictions whatever um so i try to avoid shitty topics because for that reason but uh, this is something that I do feel like needs to be addressed I briefly addressed it last week I'm gonna briefly address it now as well and that is of course the Activision Blizzard lawsuit that started last week and I gotta say from the time that I addressed it on episode 50 to now Mm -hmm. 
this shit just keeps getting worse. Like, there's just more shit popping out. You know, of course, with this, you know, lawsuit, it, it more or less involves, you know, how... And when it comes to Activision Blizzard, I, I do want to specify, everything involved in this lawsuit is directed towards Blizzard Entertainment. I do want to specify that. You know, granted, there is obviously probably stuff going on within other, you know, divisions within Activision, right? But everything involved in this lawsuit involves Blizzard Entertainment. So, you know, you're creators of beloved WoW and Overwatch, etc. Um, but, you know, this whole lawsuit, uh, you know, talking about how within blizzards become like a frat boy-esque environment you know male developers coming in hung over you know making a lot of rape jokes you know being very like forceful in terms of how they're hitting on the women etc cetera, etc cetera. women developers um you know being shafted for promotions pay raises meanwhile male counterparts at the same position but with less experience is getting promotions and etc you know male developers pawning off work on female developers and interns etc uh there was even uh, unfortunately a female developer that actually committed suicide as well you know if you guys have not read it in this lawsuit that california has uh now initiated i definitely recommend reading into it but again as i said last week there you know there's a lot of stuff within this lawsuit that could be common triggers for people so just be warned of that uh california you know initiating this lawsuit that's a big deal oh yeah that is a big deal they did a two-year investigation on this before they're just like okay we need to do this uh, then, like I said, there was a couple things that popped out uh, since last episode that we recorded. Like, for example, the Cosby Suite. Mm. Jesus Christ, man. Uh, it's like a bunch of male developers uh, from Blizzard all like laying on a bed with a f- big framed picture of Bill Cosby above them. You know, of course, if you if you if you don't know what the stuff that Bill Cosby did, you might be living under a rock. And you need to look into that yourself. Um and then there was a, another one that just popped out like yesterday because I sent it to you, I think, yesterday morning. Yeah. Where yeah, now This one didn't really specify it was Blizzard Entertainment. This seems more like it was on the Activision side of things from yeah. what I read. From what It didn't really specify anything, but um, what it was, there was a suit back in 2018 that was filed that a um, member of the development team has set up cameras underneath a sink in the bathroom facing the uh, toilets. Yep. And that... An employee had anonymously come in and reported it, another employee, but didn't really specify if it was of the employee's choice or if the company had found out and sent someone there. But more or less, guy was had a peeping cam on the bathrooms, facing bathrooms. It didn't specify what bathrooms, but based on what it is, we does it really a, matter? We can take a guess. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, man, this this just keeps getting worse. And yeah. I'm, I'm curious how much more is going to continue to come out of this and just make it worse and worse. And, you know, my, you know the, the, the main stance on this, man, is that when it comes to video games, video games is, is meant to be a mental vacation. Besides, like, maybe some very difficult games, like maybe like the Souls games, like that's kind of a mental headache. But, you know, video games, like they are meant to be fun. They're meant to, like, you come in, turn your brain off, and just have a good time. So, like, this stuff happening within the gaming space, it, is, it doesn't need to happen. It's very disheartening. And obviously, I do understand this sort of shit happens everywhere. Okay, I get that. I have worked for a company that did not treat their employees very well for reasons X, Y, Z. I get that. Okay, but you know this popping off with Blizzard Entertainment. You know we had this stuff pop off with uh, Ubisoft last year, and Ubisoft's been cleaning house mm-hmm. ever since, like just top to bottom, changing things out. And you know when it comes to Blizzard Entertainment, we've kind of seen the same thing where a lot of people have like come and go, whether if they've been dropped or they've left voluntarily, kind of like Jeff Kaplan. You know, and you can't help but to think it did Jeff Kaplan leave because of all this stuff that's transpired. You know, because let's be honest, you know he's he has a, a golden egg in front of him with Overwatch and Overwatch yeah. 2 coming out, and he just up and randomly leaves. Kind of suspicious, kind of weird. I remember at that time people going like, why is he leaving? Because it was such an odd choice at the time. Yeah. And then, you know, what, man, just what kind of also kills you with this situation is I remember a few years ago, I think it was the voice actor for Kelthos got really busted for a lot of fucked up stuff like along these lines, and they cut him, they redid voices for Kelthos and stuff, and now look where we are. You know, you, you see what I'm point where it's like they're they're kind of just like letting him take the fall for a lot yeah. of stuff and kind of still you know, everything else is still happening behind the scenes. So, I mean, when it comes to, uh, to Blizzard, you know, like I said, obviously go in and do your own research on it. Make your own just, uh, you know, justification on stuff. Uh, I will say for me, the uh, the suicide thing really kind of hit with me. You know, I've lost my mom to suicide. So hearing that a female developer committed suicide over a long list of things that transpired, but there was like one final straw that did it that would happen at a Blizzard company party. You know, I know I'm one single spec on this planet and I don't have like a huge like following or anything. We're still building. But I mean, me personally, I'm personally done with like Activision Blizzard games. 
you know, I, I don't want to get behind it. And, I, and like, again, I know there's a lot of companies out there that have done really fucked up stuff that I may still be supporting and not even know it. Right. I mean, that's all, that's how it is for everyone. Uh, but with everything that's transpired, me personally, I, I, it's not a huge loss for me. I didn't really play a lot of Activision Blizzard games as it is. You know, I've kind of dropped off from them for the most part. Um, but I mean, me personally, I'm just going to kind of take a step back, you know, hopefully one day they can kind of get things corrected, right? Because, you know, while the name now is tarnished because of the people with inside, you clean house, you get the right people in there, the name can be rebuilt. Yeah. That, that is that is being completely realistic. You know, just got to get the right people in, got to get the bad ones out. And the, na- and the brand itself, everything about it can 100% be rebuilt. Um, so hopefully that does happen eventually because these are fun games uh, with like Diablo, Overwatch, you know, even though it's kind of a dead game, Heroes of the Storm, I personally enjoy, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of WoW fans, StarCraft fans. Um, so hopefully this does get, you know, rebuilt eventually. But I mean, we've been hearing about how terrible Blizzard is for like two years now. Because yeah. I, I remember when shit was just popping off last year about how terrible the work environment was. Yeah. And I know one thing people are pushing for with this is because this is probably the biggest one out of incidents like this. But this incident happened several times across the years in different development companies and whatnot. Like Alex just mentioned, Ubisoft the year or two back. And a lot of people are pushing, especially uh, with Wednesday with the walkout that yep. was happening at Blizzard where all the employees, a large majority of employees, uh, just walked out and didn't work that day to the point where apparently uh, it's affecting development on uh, WoW. Yep. The point that uh, shareholders are now investigating. So yep. they are going to dig deep and find lots of stuff probably. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of people with this is pushing that with this being such a big thing and so much momentum being behind it that ideally s- that – the quality for gender diversity and things like that and everything in the gaming industry comes into more plausible uh, rules and held accountability just across the spectrum. So that's what people are hoping for in that industry is that we get some sort of set of rules and consistency, not just for Blizzard and Activision, Ubisoft, but just across all developers, which is how big this is getting. Yeah. And uh, for me personally, my last two little notes on this, and we'll hop on over, is uh, number one, you know, I've already said looking at the lawsuit and stuff, but there is one more thing that I, I definitely think it's, I definitely think it's worth people to go listen to because it was, it, it, it did hit, man. It was an, it was kind of an emotional watch. Is uh, there is a there's a podcast that I love. I follow it every single week. Another video game podcast uh, similar to ours called uh, the Spawncast. You can find it over at uh, youtube.com forward slash Spawnwave. I believe is just going to be the URL. I'm not 100 sure, but Spawnwave. And um, the episode last weekend, uh, you know, whatever the date was, where they talked about Activision Blizzard lawsuit. When it comes to Spawncast, it's like usually like a mix between like nine different people all on there, and for the and the, the entire cast is a bunch is all guys except for one, the one being uh, Miss Click, who's a popular Nintendo streamer, a very massive Legend of Zelda fan, and uh, I definitely recommend people to go listen to her take on this Activision Blizzard stuff because it, it was it was very deep. I uh, really hit home with a couple things that she said, so I definitely recommend listening to that. And uh, the other random little tidbit is that with all this happening, I am officially retiring. The Diablo Immortal jokes. Uh, those are now going officially behind us. Thank God. Yeah, I know Zach's very thankful for that. The Diablo Immortal jokes are now officially behind us. Uh, now I'm just going to make sure that I plug Mass Effect in every single episode <laughs> going forward. There thanks, it is. thanks to John. Thanks there to John. It is. Yep. We also have Ace Attorney plugs that we're going to try to usually get, which Zach did pick up the new Ace Attorney. He hasn't had a chance to play it yet because uh, he is busy on this uh, this large journey of Mass of Assassin's Creed. So hopefully, when you do finally get a chance, eventually we can get your thoughts on it. Because from what I've seen, everyone is saying that this port over that we finally got mm-hmm. is absolutely incredible. Oh, it looks fantastic because I've seen some stuff and just. It looks great. Yeah. So, uh, so let's hop over there. Let's let's go ahead and give our thoughts on Pokemon Unite. You know, of course, this is the uh, new MOBA that has come out from Tencent Games, uh, Timmy Studio, whatever. Um, you know, with collaboration with Pokemon Company, it's been out for about almost two weeks. Uh, pretty decent roster. Could use some help in the defender and support role. But you know, I mean, this is a. Uh, as, as I've kind of called it before, like baby's first MOBA, you know, it's definitely not as um, it's not as detailed as you're going to find it with like League or Dota, for example, or even Heroes of the Storm uh, being another one or, or Smite, another one as well. But uh, it's definitely a lot of fun. Um, it's, you know, I, I personally always said Arena of Valor was kind of like a good entry level MOBA. Mm-hmm. You know, it's more on the, t- the terms of League with the three lanes and, and like real items and stuff like that. But it's still on the, the lower end here. And Pokemon Unite is even lower than that. But even so, it is 
is still very fun. It can, you know, it, it can be very, very competitive or it can be a steamroll. Uh, there are you know, a lot of things that I wish could be improved. Um, you know, the most basic one is, you know, as we're going to be getting here soon, I've actually got some data mining here for you is, uh, you know, let's get some more defenders and supports up in here. Um, but, uh, just, you know, I wish there was better. I wish there was a way to do better communication within the game. You know, Nintendo is keeping this game obviously very positive. Yes. There's really no negative thing that you can say to players with the preset stuff. It's a very positive kid friendly game, of course. Um, but well. I will, there's one thing that people aren't sort of happy with is just the uh, economy. Yeah, and that, that that's one thing that I do feel like needs to change as well um, because you know this game was this game was talked about as pay to start, you know, yeah. free to start, free to start. Sorry, which uh, you know kind of confused us at first, but once I got into it and saw it, okay, I can get how it's called free to start. It, you know, besides like the one major thing that kind of bothers me and bothers a lot of people, it kind of reminds me of League in terms of free to start because like with League you you really only get like what a couple champions and then the free to plays and you have to buy everything else. Yeah. So it's kind of the same concept is that, you know, you get a couple champions right off the bat. You can unlock champions through the, the, the like quest and crap like that. Uh, but other than that, you got to buy everything else. But the one area where they have missed terribly and, you know, I really hope they improve. They they have put up on Twitter uh, for a player's feedback. I know a lot of people have already sent this in. I know I've seen a lot of people, you know, pleading to other gamers, Hey, please tell them this needs to change, is the in-game currency. So the in-game currency, you know, you have the coins, you can buy the gems with your own cash, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, well, when it comes to the coins, they are capped for the week. You can, yes. o you can only get 2,100 coins for the week. So that really fucks people who don't want to pay for this game and just want to play it, you know, because... The reason why that's a big deal is not only because you can, you know, buy champions, but the game does have items, as Pokemon does, that you can attach to be, you know, a three-item moveset for all your Pokemon. Those items can be leveled up from 1 to 20, which can give you different stat boosts, from ranging from uh, movement speed, cooldown reduction, attack damage, special attack damage, etc. So you can use your own money you know, gems to essentially, you know, pay for more of the coins, the item enhancers to further kind of level those up. And, you know, that creates a pay to win formula, you know, and there's a lot of people that you know, there's some people that haven't, I guess, tried it or done enough research that's saying it's not that noticeable of a difference. You can go side by side. You can find people that's already done side by sides on YouTube. Yeah. There is a noticeable difference. A significant difference. You know, because the thing that, you know, the people that's saying it's not a noticeable difference that are just like, you know, white knighting defending the game you know, are the ones that maybe have not played another MOBA before and don't understand that every percentage matters, every point difference matters, every second matters in these games if you're going to play competitively and mm -hmm. you're going to be legit. So, like, if you can last one second longer, two seconds longer, that's important. That's very important. If it take, you know, if, if it takes you to, you know, to get down to an area two seconds less where, you know, trying to get down bottom, that's important. You know, those two seconds could change the game, and people don't get that. So that pay-to-win formula that is with the items, uh, the item enhancers and stuff, that sucks. You know, I, you know, we, we get rid of the cap on the coins per week, and I feel like this game is going to be in a lot better position to support the players that don't want to spend money. Mm -hmm. It is Tencent, though. It is Timmy. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that's going to change. I hope it does. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Because you're, you're an avid MOBA player like yeah. me. So w w how, how do you take this? I mean, the whole currency thing, we have, like, four different currencies, all that do either separate things or do similar things, which is sort of bad. So, I mean, I feel like the currency thing could change definitely for economy-wise. The cap is absolutely destructive to yep. you know, playing just because with having a cap, it more or less is forcing players or more or less at some point, if they really want to expand the roster, have to put money into to expand their roster quickly. Yep. Um, unless people just really want to grind. Um, as for like the pay to win aspect, um, yeah, it's detrimental, but the thing about it is just because I feel like it'll fall off the longer this game goes. Mm -hmm. Cause as, because to grind out an item to level 20, I've already ground out two to level 20. And as you said, it's barely been two weeks. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the grind for item leveling isn't terrible. But that's also including the beginner stuff of how much... Because with the beginning of the game, there's a seven-day um, quest that you can get stuff in, and then there's a 14-day gift thing, and that gives you quite a bit of stuff. 
but I feel like it's going to become a lot harder once that disappears. So after like that two week period of just free stuff being thrown at you, it will become a bit harder. Yeah. The level and whatnot, but I still don't think the pay to win aspect is game killing. I don't I, think it's game killing. No. I feel like for just since the game just came out and it's what it is, it is sort of hurtful. But as we go longer, long people will grind that out and it'll even out in the competitive scene of once people get out. So. It's detrimental right now, but I think in the long run, it's not going to hurt it really at all because the people who are going to stick with it and play will grind that out or put as minimal money as they can to get it quicker, and it'll grind it out and balance out in its own. Um, besides that, yeah, the worst thing I think of right now is just the cap on in-game currency mm -hmm. and the fact that um, – it more or less forces you to spend actual money to really expand your roster, even with all the extras they give you and everything. And then just the actual... Um, no, yeah, that'd be it. Because, yeah, the other thing no, actually isn't an issue to me anymore. So what about, you know, one very, very hot topic that a lot of people have is what about Zapdos? You know, Zapdos <laughs> is uh, <laughs> the boss that spawns in the final two minutes. Uh, the final two minutes also initiates night mode where all scores are doubled. Um, you know, if you manage to, if you and your team manage to take out Zapdos, that allows you insta scores. Uh, what is what is your thoughts on Zapdos? Do you think do you think one of the two needs to be nerfed, whether it be Zapdos or maybe the the night mode not be double score? You know, because the, the, the Zapdos, the thing with, that sucks about it is, um, you know, you can be dominating all game long, mm -hmm. all game, just kicking this team's ass, and then you lose one team fight, which I know that's how MOBA goes. Yeah. I've been in plenty of those with, like, Heroes, for example. Uh, and then they capture Zapdos and you lose because the spike is just unbelievable you know so what's your thoughts on zapdos do you think it's in a good healthy place that we're just like okay you know it you know that's it works well with the what we have or do you think something needs to change about it i feel like something does need to be slightly changed about it i think the double points on knights fine and the actual insta scoring on zapdos is fine in itself i think the thing that really hinders it is just the fact that when the team that kills zapdos everyone that participated automatically gets 50 points that is what I think hinders it because with Good that, point. that is just a ins well. It's not always an instant turnaround, but it is pretty much a if they can score, it is just immediately turnover. Um, the only thing about it is, I feel like it's a fitting system for how short of the games are because they're ten minute games, and with ten minutes, if one side does steamroll significantly, there is no possibility of a comeback of any kind. Of any sort. So the Zapdos mechanic in itself allows for comeback and just so short of a game time that matches are. And the fact that um, it's really only helpful in a, a comeback mechanic for teams that still have uh, goals to push on. Right. So, like, if both teams have been doing well and each side only has, like, two goals left, their main one and then one of the side ones, I feel like it's a fairly easy counter. Just get a Snorlax or somebody with a bunch of AOEs and just be a dick on point so they can't cap. Um, True. Yeah, someone will cap at some point, but if only one out of five gets able to cap or maybe two, you still have a good odds of winning. Right. Um, and then the other thing would just be the fact that everyone that participates in the Thapdos kill gets 50 points, so that's an instant 500. So I feel like if there was a cap on that of just probably the m people who contributed the most in damage, like two, maybe three. It would help even it out a bit and help balance it out. So, Yeah, and that's a, that's actually a phenomenal point. I feel, like, I feel like we could see a much more healthier game if we just either take that away where you don't get the, that insta bonus or reduce it. I do feel like we would see uh, a much healthier balance in the game, like maybe only get 25 because that would give everyone 50, um, which is the max stack at that point in the game of that you could even score would be 50. Um, yeah. So 25 doubling up. I mean, I, I think that could be really healthy for the game is just to get rid of that because you're right. I mean, if all five managed to contribute, that is 50, 50, 50, 50. That's, that's 500 that's about to get slam dunked on your face. Um, so I, I definitely think that could uh, be a way to help uh, make the games a little bit healthier. Um, another thing, you know, is just like when it comes to the the, uh, the draft process, I do kind of wish that the the timer was a little bit longer. 
Um, so that way we can get a better draft. And I wish there was a better way to communicate too. You know, obviously Nintendo has never had a good communication system. I mean, f- for Jesus Christ, they they make you use a <laughs> fucking app to communicate with your friends. You know, on you know, Nintendo Switch Online app, like it's so stupid. You know, so I wish there was some sort of way to better communicate. Um, you know, to kind of build your teams if you're trying to play ranked and stuff, because mm-hmm. most of the time people just insta lock like whatever their damage is going to be. Um, and in terms of like the, um, you know, um, building the teams, one tiny little pet peeve I have um, is because you know is the the supports. I have one little pet peeve with that because as you switch through mon to mon based on your team, it'll give you a recommendation. It's like your team needs this to be more balanced. Uh, as far as I know, there's not a notification for a support. Is there not? I do not believe so. I have never seen a, so a support notification pop up. It's always attacker, defender, or um, or all arounder. That's the only ones I've ever seen popped up. It's like add this to your team to be more balanced, and we won't have a support. And like I, I've seen it where it's like four damage, and all it will pop up is add a defender to your team. Huh. So I, I have as and I, this is a pet peeve of mine because while I'd rather not be a support main because Lucario is my favorite Pokemon, I'd like and I'm, I'm I'm pretty decent with Lucario. I'd like to play him a little bit more often. Eldegoss is now my top played Pokemon and my highest win rate. I play support pretty much religiously and competitive because I want to win. And it's the same thing that happened in Overwatch. I became a support main and a tank main in Overwatch because no one wanted to fucking play the roles and everyone just wanted to go play fucking Reaper and Soldier 76 and Genji and shit and suck ass. So I'd play like Reinhardt and Moira and, and Lucio and et cetera. You know, so we fill crucial roles and it's the same thing here with Pokemon United is I'm just being the team player. You know, I can flex into either one, but as a support main right now, I do have a little pet peeve that it does not prompt players to play support. Maybe as we get more supports coming, that could change. And I, I do think that should change because I do find the immense value for a support on a team because me personally, I've been, I've done, I've done both where it'll be literally four damage, whether it be all arounders, attackers and speed, whatever the combo is for the four. And I'm the last one left to pick between a defender and a support. I've done both. And I personally opt for picking for a support over defender in that situation. Now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever seen it prompt to say, pick a speedster either. Yeah. Speedster does not also get prompted either. It's just defender and attacker and, um, an all arounder. So that, that's just a little tidbit that I have. Um, now, the only other thing about this game that I would immensely change is we got to do something about these fucking menus. We have to do something <laughs> about these fucking menus. These menus are so bad. Oh, my God. They're so slow. They're so unresponsive and laggy, especially during the character selection process. Tencent, we got to fix this. Like, they're like, you know, I'm sure, like, it may not have been bad during all your beta runs and stuff, but, you, you know, Tencent developers, you need to get on this fucking game and see what this shit is right now. Because it, it is so slow and it's so laggy as people are swapping between stuff. You can barely switch between stuff. John found a little, like, hack around whatever where if you immediately when you get in press x and it pulls up the full menu i can't even fucking do that i get in there and i press x and it's like my game kind of like the whole game kind of almost freezes and i have to hit the quick chat thing to pop up and hit out of that and then it allows me to go back and select my stuff we got to fix these menus man these menus are awful the gameplay itself is fun it's very fluid you know obviously as anyone would that you're gonna have complaints about oh this person needs nerf this person needs buffed etc i would say gengar might could use a little bit of a nerf he's Kind of busted once he gets rolling, but you know that's kind of the point of, as a as a speedster, be which is an assassin jungler. Uh, Zeror is kind of along the same lines. You know there are some ones that get buffed, but I mean overall it's a very fun game. I definitely think it's absolutely worth a play if you're a Pokemon fan, if you're a MOBA fan, whatever. Um, it's a good way just to kill some time. You know I'm enjoying playing it competitively personally. Uh, and, you know just trying to get better and learn different team comps, and I'm looking forward to seeing what comes out of the meta right now because I did f- come across one very interesting team comp online that I, I kind of wanted to try at some point once I kind of figured out like wh- who all does what is a team comp where you have your one speedster in the jungle you have three bottom and Lucario soloing top I thought that was a pretty interesting comp I've seen some people steamroll with it so that you know I'm looking forward to seeing what happens to the meta because that is a thought that I have yeah. I've had a lot recently is 
what Pokemon could you solo a lane with, right? Because, like, you know, and that, that question prompts because there was, you know, a couple of uh, champions in Heroes of the Storm, the MOBA that I've played the most, where you can solo lanes with. Mm-hmm. You know, one of my favorites was on Brax's holdout. I would play Rexar. I, you know, Rexar is a, a champion where you have to control Misha. Um, is it Mishka or Misha? I don't remember. Misha and Rexar, you have to control both two units at the same time. And you could run a lane by yourself with that. So it's like a two lane map. You have have four your entire four team on bottom and one top and you could run the game like that so i have been kind of curious what pokemon you could you do that with you know one idea that i did have uh was maybe a venusaur since you could do the pedal dance yeah. giga drain combo to kind of self-sustain and he is a range so that does give you a little bit of distance so the, i'm very curious to see how the meta is going to continue to evolve uh especially with some mons that we have coming out because we already uh, gardevoir has already come out uh we know blastoise is coming and uh, who's going to be another defender which we so desperately need we only have what three um, and then we only have three supports as well. But then there was mm-hmm. also a, another mystery mon that we don't know what's coming. Well, we do know what it is, it's just a matter of which one. So, of course, we have Last Toys on the way. But here in the data mining, we have found playable codes for, and movesets and everything, for Blissey, Sylveon, and Greedent. Dude, I love Greedent. That's one of my favorite Gen 8 mons, man. I love that fat squirrel, so I'm here for that. Uh, Blissey, of course, is going to be a support. And looking at its move pool with, like, a heal bell, um, like a helping hand and stuff like that, going to probably be a... A very beefy good support which is very which is nice because out of the supports it's needed it because is. out of what supports we have it's very um when they went support they went yeah they can help a team and not oh they can heal them exactly <laughs> i was like out of our supports edelgoss the only one with a consistent heal mr mime can heal but it's not a great skill and then um and plus with mr mime to get that heal skill you gotta what pass up on the walls yeah, you gotta get you gotta lose your walls and actually be able to hit your allies, and then you have um, Jigglypuff, who just goes around slapping people's shit. So yeah, exactly, and just and it's just a hindrance with singing stuff. So getting Blissey that can actually heal is gonna be really nice and kind of balance things out where it's not just always Edelgoss, uh, Sylveon. Um, I would, I would say attacker or speedster is probably going to be its role. So, I mean, Gardevoir we just got was an attacker. Um, so I would say Sylveon is an attacker or speedster as well. Blastoise, of course, a defender. Greedent, I would probably say a defender. You know, uh, yeah, that, Greedent's a, a beefy boy. He's How a f- would you feel about all rounds? I'm here for it, man. That's that's great. I like I love like the all arounder role. You know, for anyone that has played MOBAs before and has not checked this, all arounder is similar to like a bruiser. Yeah. And I'm all about bruisers. That was one of my favorite roles to play in heroes and in other games is just like a beefy guy that can do some damage. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to playing Greedy. I'm gonna hope it's a defender because we do need to get some more tanks in there. Uh, now there are some other things that it has been data mined. Uh, there are some that have now been further classified for what they're gonna be. So there's uh, Joltik and Garvantula. You know, Gen five mons there stuffle and beware gen 7 mons and toxicroak a gen 4 mon those all were data mined and now been determined to be spawns on the map which i did think was possible for uh the the spiders whatever because i kind of relate it to the bees you know kind of like mm-hmm. one of those types of spawns now there's a bunch of others that are unknown that are found like nido king venonat tauros carnivine Aegislash, slash toxapex uh P- pukamuku articuno uh, Jirachi, Victini, and Zerneus. So, Pukamuku, I would put big money on. It's just another spawn. Um, Tauros, I'd say, is a spawn similar to Bufalant. Venonat, uh, from indi- from the indications that they found, seems to be a spawn, but they did th- find some possible source codings for a Venonat. Um, Which is curious, because Venonat's a evolution. Ven- Venomoth, right? Yeah, yeah. Is a spawn on the 3v3 map. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then that's probably all that is. That's probably all that is. Then, um, Carnivine. I could see it. It's Carnivine's dumb enough to be a playable Pokemon for me. They added Cramorant for God's sake, who I love by the way. Um, so I could see Carnivine being a playable, or it could be like one of the more beefier spawns, like a Ludicolo or you know a Buffalant. Uh, Toxapex. Uh, that's a, that's a tricky one too. That could be a very good defender. Um, or it could just be a spawn. I would put big money that Age of Slash is just a it's just a playable mod. I would put big money on that. Uh, Nido King, unsure about that one too. It could either be like a Rotom or a Dreadnought spawn I would love or a playable. That as a playable. I think it could be. And you know, the one thing that's interesting about Age of Slash Nido King that I gotta point out where it's just like for them being playable is that obviously it doesn't include evolutions, but they're kind of in the same realm of where like their evolution is not via level up, it's via uh, stones. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's why, because it's kind of the same thing with like why there's no Ryolu, you know. 
it's just that it's a different evolution. It's friendship. So it's just yeah. you're playing base, you know, Lucario. So, uh, you know, I do think Nido King would probably be like, what, a good all arounder, maybe? Yeah, most uh, definitely. That, uh, Age of Slash. I don't know what the fuck Age of Slash could be. All arounder, probably. I don't know because, I mean, if you're able to switch between which stance, he could either be a defender or an all arounder, really. Because, you know, you get him in that shield mode, he's got some big health, some, some big defense, big special defense, but then you go to sword mode and it's big dick damage. So I don't, I'm very curious to see how they're going to handle Aegis Lads. I feel like he's going to be a little busted. Uh, Articuno and Zernaeus, I'd put big money. It's just more bosses. Um, yeah. Jirachi and Victini, I would say those are going to be playable. I, I, my guess is playable. And if I had to take a guess, I would say Jirachi is either going to be a support or a defender because even though I know Jirachi's small, but let's be real, those it's got very high defense stats. It is a steel type after all. Uh, and Victini, uh, I'd say definitely a speedster. That's a fast. That's a fast little fucker. So I definitely say speedster be like a jungler and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, that that'd be my guess on all these. Pukamuku spawn Toxapex. I would like to see Toxapex as a playable, as a defender. That'd be kind of cool. Aegis Slash, who fucking knows? I mean, all-arounder probably. Carnivine, mm, I would say that's going to be a spawn, but if it had to be a Pokemon, I would probably say maybe an attacker. I don't know. Uh, Tauros, a spawn. Nido King, all-arounder. Jirachi, defender, support, Victini, speedster. So that'd be pretty dope. Now, there are some, uh, some other Pokemon that we have both seen in the past through beta or trailers and there's also been coding for it's been found but they're no longer been found like uh marshadow clefable and alteria alteria i know was in one of the first trailers and uh, there's it's nowhere to be found in the coding so it probably got scrapped clefable was in like beta coding and it probably got scrapped in favor for blissey marshadow that one is an interesting one i'm interested why that's not even in you know why the coding's not found as if they would have scrapped it Mm -hmm. uh because i feel like that would be a pokemon that would potentially be played Playable. But maybe it's one of those things where they're just like, okay, they're trying out Marshadow, you know, the ghost fighting type from Gen 7, and they just went against and decided to go with Zeraora. Another another yeah. another mythical from uh from Gen 7. So that that's possibly why it uh got scrapped. But I mean overall Pokemon Unite is a lot of fun. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing um the support for it as time goes on. Um, you know, with more Pokemon coming out and stuff. I, I will say I, I got to temper some expectations. I would not expect a new Pokemon every two weeks. You know, I, you know, I know we just got Gardevoir, but you know, they've already had these kind of working in development and stuff, but I yeah. just, I would temper expectations, but Zach, any last thoughts on Pokemon tonight? I mean, it'd be nice for every two weeks. Cause I do know of at least one MOBA S game that does keep a schedule like that, which it's more around like three or four weeks, give or take. Um, but that's just a very hard schedule. I mean, but finding all these codes and whatnot, we shall see soon enough Yep. how quickly they are turning stuff out and actually working on things. But you know what I really need? Hmm. I need a Tangela. Yes. Tang- give me give me Tang Growth. Give me Mr. Tickle. Let's go. <laughs> because, I mean, I enjoy all what's in the game right now, and what, but for CC aspects, I would like some diversity. I mean, there's stuns and holes and whatnot, yeah, yeah. but I need a lot more... Pulls and binds to really mess with people. Yeah, and uh, if you guys haven't checked it out in the past, uh, whenever I was uh, doing DBA Season 2, which was the competitive Pokemon League that I was running, it, it was actually here on YouTube.com forward slash Sparky3. One of my drafted mons was Tangrowth. Yeah. I had two versions. I had a physical attacker and a special attacker, so I, I had them nicknamed Mr. and Mrs. Tickle. Because they had the move Tickle that I always wanted to use, but I never found the use for it. But those were some beefy bastards, <laughs> and I loved those guys, man. They came in clutch. Jared was not a fan. <laughs> Jared was not a fan of the Tickle family. I would love that person. I am a grass hole, though. So any more grass Pokemon we can get, the better. And and, I, and that does remind me, last, last tidbit before we move on, I am very disappointed that in all these coatings, there is no more grass starters in the coatings. Come on, man! You get uh, Venusaur is cool. Fire and Water both have one apiece. You know, have have two, right? You know, they got Blastoise in the way and Greninja and Cinderace. Yeah. Come on, give me another one, man! The grass starters have so much potential. Sceptile in the jungle, Chestnut being a defender, Garuki, um, uh, Rillaboom being an all arounder. They give you Bayleaf. Okay, look. Look, listen, listen, <laughs> listen. Meganium is by far my least favorite starter, but I'm here for it because that'd probably be a dope ass healing support. I mean, Meganium would be dope as shit as I would, a support. I would be but here for that. I'm here for any of them. It, honestly, the Gen Two. I mean, as much as I would love to see them, their starters are 
sort of weak. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're, they're cool. I love Typhlosion, for example. Yeah. But they are on the weaker side. But Meganium would be dope. Sceptile, like I said, good speedster. Um, uh, Torterra, great defender. I'd love for that. I love me some Torterra. Superior, probably a good speedster or attacker. Um, Chestnut, like I said, good defender. Uh Decidui, good speedster or an attacker. Rillaboom, good all-arounder. Come on, man. Give me some more grass starter fi- final evolution love, man. They're always getting fucking shafted. It's bullshit. All right, so let's move on. Um, we're we're going to be uh, do a quick breakdown here of everything that went down last week when we did our episode 50. So the three main things to point out here is, number one, we had the EA Play Live, of course. Which was great. It was. It was really solid, man. It uh, got to show off a new game, uh, Grid Legends. We got to see a new season for Apex Legends called Emergence with a new legend called Seared Zach's a big Apex player, so curious to hear his thoughts on that. We had Lost and Random. We had Knockout City Season 2. This is a game that I still want to try. It looks like a lot of dumb fun. I just haven't tried it because I'm I'm, I'm just scared that I'm going to get into it and then it's going to die because there's no community. But I'm kind of curious to see how this is going there. We did get some Battlefield 2042 news, which involves a Battlefield Portal game mode, which is where you can basically go in and create your own game mode. It's a, The way it was described to me when I read about it, it's essentially Mario Maker, but for FPS games. Yeah, no. So that's pretty cool. It's pretty much a workshop, which... It has everything from previous battlefields that they've put into it and just allows you to test the systems. Yeah. Uh, And then lastly, we had the reveal for the Dead Space remake, which we have been talking about here for a little bit. Uh, Another piece of news that we got is that involving these Netflix games, which we have talked about before, uh, it will not cost extra to your subscription, uh, and they are set to develop mobile games first. So kind of curious what's all going to come out of that. And the last little tidbit uh, involving this, you know, more stuff came out of this big Nintendo Giga League that's gone on for like the past year where they're slowly just trickling information that uh, Nintendo that just scrap stuff like the Super Nintendo game. GameCube before the Wii was decided on was a canceled Zelda game. This was back in like the N64 days and I have to think that with how this game was kind of set up and built that it gave a lot of inspiration for what was to come for Majora's Mask potentially because Majora's Mask is considered one of the more darker games in the, in the series, mm-hmm. darker tone. Well, the canceled Zelda game was actually going to be focused on Sheik, and it was set to be darker tones. It, you know, you can look up this. There are screenshots that were released of, like, the areas that you can explore, a couple areas you can explore, and it looks dope. Um, but, um, you know, so let, let's give some thoughts on this past week. So for me, for the Zelda thing, the thing that's really interesting about this is that one thing that people have always asked for out of Zelda is, like, the potential of a spinoff where you don't play as Link. But it's like they're almost, they've always been almost too afraid to kind of make yeah. that jump. So it's, it's interesting to see that they considered making the jump at one point with a popular character like Sheik. Um, so I'm curious if we're going to get to that point where we have an opportunity to play as someone else other than Link. You know, is, is that going to be a possibility? You know, this game will obviously never see the light today. I also say this game was set to be developed by Retro Studios. So that would probably have been a pretty good game, let's be real. Um, I, I, this is a game that, as a Zelda fan, I would have loved to see. As much as I love my boy Link, and I love all the different variations, and I love all the lore that goes behind Zelda. It's one of my favorite franchises of all time. I would really like to see some spinoffs and continue to explore on the lore, because there's so much lore within that universe to explore. Um, but, you know, for for the stuff that kind of recapped last week, that's probably my biggest takeaway. It's just like, wow, that you know, think of the possibilities and what could possibly set up. But what about you, Zach? You know, how are you feeling towards, like, let's say Battlefield? How are you feeling towards Apex? How are you feeling towards Dead Space? I mean, great to hear that Dead Space is getting a remake. It's needed. It's a franchise that's been silent for a while, so yep. hopefully this will allow a new generation of people to mess with it and enhance graphics and all that fun stuff and revisit the franchise. Uh, Apex, Apex seems like it's doing well with Seer coming in, adds in a new tracker. It's really going to mess with people with uh, new mechanics and whatnot because his ultimate more or less just creates a entire zone where he sees all your movements. <laughs> and his team does too. So, Jesus. yeah, if you move, he knows where you are. So prepare to get shot a lot. Um, but overall, yeah, see, it looks like he'll be good fun and everything. Um, honestly, when they first showed the design, I was like, Kung Lao? <laughs> I was like, what, you, what are you doing here, buddy? Um, Lost and Random looks interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm very curious by its whole mechanics and adventure style based off like dice and things like that mm-hmm. and sort of darker uh, hues and things. So that would be a very interesting game that I'll probably take a look at and everything. As for EA itself, that show is just great. 
Um, showed off everything very well. Was stri- streamlined. We got our game news. We were shown stuff. It was good. As for the Zelda stuff, um, it would have been nice to get a sheet game. That yep. would have been fun. Uh, in terms of actually getting a offshoot game, doubtful. At this point in time, yeah, uh, probably probably doubtful. But I don't know. I feel like um, with how much more it's just continued, the franchise has continued to grow and grow. I do feel like it could be a possibility. I mean, especially when you look at two Zelda offshoots that did really well with the Hyrule Warriors mm-hmm. games. Uh, I know one like kind of offshoot they did the Triforce Heroes that didn't do super well, uh, but maybe Nintendo might be willing to take a chance at some point and maybe do an offshoot of something. But it's just a matter of what and when and where. So it'd be kind of cu- I'm I am curious to see what's going to come out of it in terms of a sheet game. I would go ahead and consider that one done and dead. That that will never no. be a be a thing. But who knows? Maybe we could get that game that people have wanted for so long, where you play as Zelda, not Link. Um, here, I thought you were going to say Ganondorf. Now, I do know people that would want that, too. And that that would be kind of <laughs> cool. That would be kind of cool. Um, all right, so let's jump into more recent stuff, what we've had uh, going on here just as of recent. So we did have um, the Halo Infinite tech preview that's been going on this past weekend. Uh, obviously, this uh, there is some roughness to it. There are some things to, that's, you know, this, it's a tech preview. Come on. Like, you know, it's not going to be perfect, but it does look pretty solid from everything that I've seen. It's been received very well minus like oh you know this could be fixed this could be again it's a tech preview but it's been received exceptionally well from everyone uh, a lot of people saying that if you're an old school halo fan this game is going to be for you for the multiplayer it does look pretty dope i am excited to get my hands on this later this year uh once we finally get a release date um going from there uh we do have modern warfare 3 remaster is apparently rumored to be bundled with 2021 cod that would not be surprising modern warfare 2 remastered the same thing uh but this of course only being the campaign so if you're a big modern warfare 3 multiplayer guy sorry it's gonna be the same thing with modern warfare 2 which still disappoints me modern warfare 2 is still my favorite call of duty so it's still disappointing there we did finally get a release date for stray the game where you play as a cat and i'm really excited for this game i got to see some gameplay for it and it is set to come out early 2022 uh we also got a release date for Solar Ash, another kind of smaller indie game coming to the PS5 that we got to see in the PS5 showcase last year. That is coming out October 26th. We did get a release, uh, an, an announcement for Outer Wilds expansion. It's coming actually uh, September 28th. It's titled Echoes of the Eye. There is a trailer released. So if, you, if you're if you an Outer World, uh, Wilds fan, make sure to go watch that and check it out if you have not already. Uh, there is already a new Animal Crossing New Horizons update out. If you haven't played the game in a little bit, make sure to hop on there and enjoy all that with like fireworks and everything along those lines. That did launch on the 29th. Uh, we also had a new uh, collab launched for Monster Hunter Rise and Okami. You can have Okami follow you around so that's actually pretty cool if you have not checked that out make sure to check that out as well here in just a couple days we will have a free update for new pokemon snap it's going to involve three new areas and 20 new pokemon that launches on august 4th which people were salty for for some reason i don't know why it's a free fucking update for a game you probably wouldn't think was going to get one why are you mad pokemon fans are never happy that's the bottom line um we do have uh the preload came out for this abandoned app <laughs> on the PS5. The preload is out. The launch is very soon. 8, 10, we're launching. And hopefully finally figuring out what the fuck this game is. So at this point, we still don't know if this is a secret Silent Hill or not. Man, I think it is. I really do. I, I saw... See the, All right, look. Listen. Time listen. to jump down the rabbit hole. Listen, listen. If it's not a Silent Hill... Blue Box, that was the, yes. Blue Box is just hard playing into this just to get publicity, you know, and get eyes on the game because they even put out another, um, like you know, image, whatever, where it's like it had like I think the name of it of Abandon, it's like in the Metal Gear font. I think you could even see like a guy with an eye patch in the background. Like, come on, man, you're playing into this so hard, like it's got to be. It's got to be Silent Hill. I mean, if it's not, and they took this for what it was, props to Blue Box. <laughs> True. They got some big balls, dude. <laughs> they got some massive balls. And, man, if it's not Silent Hill, as I've said before, I hope the game does well. I'm going to kind of, at this point, I don't know if I'm going to feel bad. If it's not Silent Hill and they've just played into this just to get eyes on the game and it flops, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to feel bad anymore. Once upon a time, yeah, I think I, I potentially was going to feel bad. Now, not so much. I mean, 
either it's just going to say is abandoned or when people go to launch it, it's going to have an immediate update and that picture is going to change from abandoned to Silent Hill. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I need to get that preloaded on me, my PS5. I'm going to check that out here on the 10th to see what this is about. I, like I said, man, if it's not Silent Hill... I don't I don't know if I'm gonna feel bad if it flops because they've played into this so hard. Or it's a whole thing to announce Silent Hill. Yes. It's not Silent Hill itself, but it's a teaser, playable teaser that is Silent Hill. Yes. Just back to PT days. God man. Curious to see what's gonna come out of this. This has been such a shit show. Uh next little piece of news in the TV world here. Uh Pokemon live action series is in development at Netflix, and there's also a in active development here, a Dragon Age live action series at Netflix. That's cool and all, but where's my Mass Effect movie or series? Come on, man. That's what we need. Dragon Age is cool. I know you're a Dragon Age guy, but we need Mass Effect. That's what we need. Uh, we also finally got the release date for a game that like, I know our friend Josh has had his eye on for a very long time. I've had my eye on it as well, and it's been radio silent forever. It was supposed to come out like last summer, and that is called Baldo, the Guardian Owls. This is an indie game that is set to come out. Uh, we finally got the release date of August 27th, just this month. It's coming out for Switch, PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Apple Arcade, which I didn't know was a thing. I did not know what that was. But it's a thing, apparently. Uh, Baldo, the Guardian Owls, is, is it's like a mix of Studio Ghibli and um, and Zelda. So there you go. That's all you really need to know. If you're a fan of those, you're probably going to like this. They did give some more details where it's going to have 11 major dungeons. That's cool. Like major dungeons. Uh, 50 smaller dungeons, uh, similar to like the Breath of the Wild Shrines. Uh, mini side quests and 50 plus hours of gameplay. This is an indie game I do have my eye on and uh, looking forward to trying out at some point in time. I can assure you it will not be on the 27th though, but I so will at some point. As someone who hasn't looked into this, do you play as an owl? No. What do you play as? Some boy. Are owls involved? In some capacity, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> but in what capacity, I do not know. Um, so here's an, here's an interesting little piece for you here. This has been something that people have been wanting since the release of the PlayStation 5. Uh, the PS5 is now starting to roll out. some. There, it's, like, it's currently in a beta update period right now where they're kind of still testing it, where you can f- uh, finally add in the uh, NV, uh, ME drive SSD to your PlayStation 5 because there's a slot for it in the PS5 that has been disabled since the release. And as you know, if you've got a PS5, then you know not a lot of storage on that thing, especially with the size of these fucking games, right? Um, so that slot is now set to be usable. I know Seagate was uh, announcing um, some different, uh, like officially licensed, like P- you know, Sony drives, whatever, that's going to be compatible. And you also need to go, if you want to do this, you also need to go to Sony's website to see more about compatible compatibility lists because they do st- specify that you're going to want to get an SSD that has like a built-in heat sink and stuff like that. Uh, to, you know, just to reduce, you know, overheating. And man, I got to say for these um, SSD drives that were announced by Seagate, you know, which is no surprise if you're into computers and stuff, you know, this shit's expensive. That shit's expensive. Oh, yeah. Like it was like a four terabyte was a thousand dollars. It's like you can buy two PS5s for that. Like what the fuck? Um, and, you know, one thing that's interesting to note about this is that, you know, Xbox uh, series, they have like a slot where you can drop in like a, like a memory card or like an SSD or whatever it was. I don't remember. And that's all you have to do. You just have to kind of like insert it and you're done with the with this MVME drive, you have to literally take apart your PlayStation 5 to install it. That's how you got to get in there. You take off, Oof. take off the white side caps. You know, apparently, you know, from what I've seen, it will literally only take five minutes, right? Wow. It'll only take five minutes, but for someone who may not be super knowledgeable on doing those sort of things and don't want to mess up their $500 console, that's where it's a little worrisome. And just also imagine it from like, uh, from a kid's perspective where it's just like, you know, mom and dad will have to deal with it. Our mom and dad going to want to take it apart to give them some more memory compared to an Xbox. You can just put it in and move on. You know what I mean? I will say, uh, PlayStation's direction to go with this is very interesting. And I do question why it wasn't included to begin with besides pricing. I know pricing would go up a little bit, but maybe just go like a smaller SSD drive to give you a little something. But I don't know. I mean, that's just a little tidbit for you guys. If you need more memory, you are going to be set to be able to do this soon. And I imagine there's going to be some tutorials up on YouTube in the near future showing you how to do it. Uh, let's talk about some sales numbers here. Uh, first, let's hit some Xbox here. Uh, it has sold so far. The Xbox Series consoles has sold 6.5 million units. That's the fastest selling uh, Xbox console in history. Uh, PS5 sales has sold 10 million so far. And we also did get some game sales as well. Returnal sold 560K. 
Death Stranding sold five million. Miles Morales sold six point five million, and Rift Apart one point one million. Uh, Zach, do you have any thoughts on these sales numbers? Because uh, you know they were really hyping up Returnal to be like this massive hit, this incredible seller. Which don't get me wrong, five hundred sixty k is good, but it's I guess kind of lower than what you expect. But for that type of game, like the Souls like rogue game almost, you know, I can get why it's a little bit lower. But you know, obviously that sold enough for Sony to step up and buy House Mark, you know. And then also Death Stranding with five million, you know, how, you know, any any thoughts on this? Is that Death Stranding for PS5 or just Death Stranding in general? Death Stranding in general. I mean, I'm not surprised by that then, just because it was Kojima and people were on the Kojima train. True. Um, Returnal, I can understand that sales number just because Souls games aren't for everybody. Yeah. It was Souls with guns, so I'm pretty sure some people were sort of skeptical about what it was going to be, seeing as there's tons of Souls-like games that are awful. Right. Uh, Miles Morales, not really surprised. It's Spider-Man. People True. were hyped from the Spider-Man game, so True. we're ready True. for more. True. You especially. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ratchet and Clank is a series that's been dead for a while, so people were, the fan base for that was super on board. Oh, ready yeah. For it. And then everything that came out about it was Rift Apart was really great and fun, so naturally more people picked it up. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I will say the Returnal one was kind of shocking. You know, maybe I expected less sales. You know what I mean? I, I wasn't expecting 560K. It's still a decent mm-hmm. amount, but I was expecting less. Um, but, I mean, either way, it's cool to see that Xbox Series is the fastest-selling console in Xbox history. Uh, 10 million for PS5 is incredible as well. So, big shout-outs to that. Uh, all right, last little piece of news that we have here for the day. Uh, we got to talk about some delays. We got a lot of delays. We got three different delays that all hit within the same week, one of them being more notable than the others. Uh, so the first one that I'll hit, uh, Crimson Desert. This was announced, I think, at the Game Awards, right? I think that's where me and you saw it when I was watching yeah. that live. Uh, this game has been uh, <laughs> delayed indefinitely. We have no idea when it's coming out. They gave Oof. no indication, just that it is delayed, period. Uh, Digimon Survive. Man, this is a game that John and I have been pumped up for for a while. It has gotten delayed, I think, this is the third time, and is now delayed to quarter three, 2022, is the current window. Sooner or later, this game's going to come out. I just hope it's good. <laughs> I just hope it's good. And then the last one, which, you know, it's funny that this finally happened because, uh, we, you know, we were speculating on this. After Herman yeah. Hulse talked about the release window for this game, Horizon Forbidden West is uh, a seeming to be delayed. Now, I will say this is not confirmed from Sony. This is confirmed from Jason Schreier with Bloomberg. Uh, and he did say it is it's it's delayed. Like you know, they're gonna announce it here in the near probably the next couple of weeks, but it is 100% delayed, which uh, you know makes perfect sense. Herman Holtz was kind of you know a little iffy about release date anyway. He did specify that hey, it could come out early 2022. We're still aiming for this year. We're on good pace, but we'll see. I do know when the uh, like like when the big trailer state of play happened, whatever mm-hmm. the trailer that was released on YouTube afterwards, I think had at the end of it had like a fall 2021 and like small font at the bottom i remember they had to take the trailer down and edit that part out they, they took the whole thing down re-upload it just and, and did and did not have a release window because they didn't know so horizon getting delayed is not necessarily a big shocker for us like the game looked great yeah when we saw the state of play but herman was kind of like eh, it could happen we'll see digimon survive nope no surprise it's been fucking radio sound just like ghostwire tokyo before that got delayed um but now there's a couple questions number one does sony have anything up their sleeve for this holiday or are they just gonna take the l in terms of first party releases like right now what we got we have uh ghost of shima director's cut coming out this month death loop coming out next month and is that it is that i think that as of now that's all we have I mean, I think it is, and even Deathloop isn't even exclusive. It's just a... Uh, it's timed exclusive. Yeah, just with uh, Bethesda, since it was something set up before the whole Xbox buying Bethesda, which people find funny. True, yeah. Um, man, obviously the PS5s are going to sell no matter what, because it's you know, PS5 is going to sell based on brand alone, because of the things they know is to come out of it. But, uh, I mean, I, I, I got to say... This is looking like a pretty weak fall release ga- uh, cycle. I mean, we've got some good bangers that are coming out. Halo Infinite, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, Forza uh, is coming out. Um, we have Metroid Dread coming out. Pokemon uh, Gen 4 remakes. And, you know, Sony doesn't really have anything to really bring to the table. You know, so it does look like a pretty weak schedule. But the follow-up question, Jesus Christ, 2022 is loaded. Like, 2022 is currently set to be one of the best years in gaming that we have ever had. 
Uh, I actually got a little bit of a list that I, I got here in front of me that I, I pulled out some more notable ones like Pokemon Legends Arceus, Elden Ring, Redfall, Starfield, Baldur's Gate 3, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, Gotham Knights, Lord of the Rings Golem, Hogwarts Legacy, Ark 2, Breath of the Wild 2. God of War Ragnarok, for Vi- uh, Horizon Forbidden West, Ghostwire Tokyo, Rainbow Six Extraction, Plague Tale Requiem, Digimon Survive, Grand Turismo 7, Mario and Rabbids 2, Rune Factory 5, Splatoon 3, Sonic 2022, and Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Jesus Christ, man. 2022 is really set up to be an absolute banger. Like, is this going to be the best year in gaming ever? I think it's going to be one of the better ones because, I mean, after the year that was 2020 and all the delays from that, then people trying to recover it this year, it was sort of expected yeah. just that 2022 or 2023 was going to get a lot of hits. Yes. So with everything being pushed back for months, so it's definitely going to be one of the better years. Whether it'll be the best year determines on how these games come out. Yep, how they deliver. <laughs> and they're actually good, and we don't get just a slew of cyberpunks. <laughs> true. <laughs> that would be very unfortunate. Uh, that would be unfortunate. But, I mean, it is potential to be one of the best years for gaming, just with how many titles we have coming out, how many um, AAA titles we have. And we had only scratched of how many indie titles which will come out, because true. there's always indies that come out of nowhere that are always very good. Hades being one of the most notable recent ones, yes. from like last year. Mm-hmm. And everything. So, I mean... It looks to be like a good year next year with all the titles, so we should have definitely plenty to play and talk about come next year. This year, uh, for holiday season, this may be the opportunity to get PS5s on the shelf because yep. maybe people won't may not buy them because there's not a lot they want to pick up mm-hmm. and that there's titles on Xbox or PC or things that are coming out that for holidays that people would rather pick up and play now rather than get a PS5 now and have to wait. So. That is true because, you know, like I said, PS5s, they're going to sell based on brand alone, but there's going to 100% be those gamers out there that's not going to give a shit to pick it up because there's nothing to play on it. You know, again, talking about the Spawn cast, I, I you know, listened to just yesterday's episode. Uh, one of the guys is just like, yeah, dude, my PS5 at this point is just like with this delay, it's just collecting dust. Like, I don't give a shit about Deathloop. You know, Ratchet was okay. You know, I want to play Ghost because I never played it, but he's like, I don't give a shit about Deathloop. Like, there's nothing coming out. Like, this thing's basically collecting dust. There are going to be players like that. Yeah. Um, and I, I'll be honest, I might be in that same realm, you know, right now. Like, from the looks of it, with what's set to come out, I'm going to be more focused on my Switch and, you know, P- my PC, perhaps an Xbox Series X if I can get my hands on one before Halo Infinite. That's going to be where my realm is going to be this fall. Like, not my PlayStation's collecting dust right now. Um, but I will... Uh, one thing I do want to point out, because I was... Uh, I was personally really kind of pushing this and just like it was kind of like one of my yeet predictions for for next year with God of War set to come out the next year from the looks of it and Horizon. I'm going to go ahead and make a guess that Spider-Man 2 is not happening. I would probably say they're going to just kind of ride the wave on those two yeah. because like I was predicting that Spider-Man 2 was going to potentially come out next year because I mean, let's look at it. I mean, Miles Morales had an announcement in August and a release in November. They had already been working on it. We know Spider-Man 2 has been worked on for a little while as it is and it's been consistently being worked on. They already have the engine, the world built. It's not going to be like a six-year development cycle like Spider-Man was. Um, so I was predicting it was going to release next next fall that was my prediction and could it still come true yeah sure could we'll see you know they could release three bangers in one year i mean they released spider-man and god of war in the same year and i think horizon was was did horizon come out in 2018 or 2017 I think it was 2017. I believe 2017. Okay, then yeah, 2018 was God of War and Spider-Man. So they, they usually go for two massive ones a year with some other pretty decent ones in between. So I'd go ahead and say Spider-Man th- 2 will probably be a 2023 game. But, uh, I mean, as it stands now with everything coming out next year, I don't even know what I'm most excited for. I mean, naturally, you'd want to say Breath of the Wild 2. It's one of my favorite franchises. But I know I'm going to like that. You know, I know I'm going to enjoy my, my time with that. But, I mean, like Starfield, everything I've heard about it looks fantastic. Horizon Forbidden West. God of War, uh, Pokemon Legends, you know, like Jesus Christ, I don't, I don't even know what I'm most excited for. And I, man, next year, I, I'm, I'm really pumped up to watch the Game Awards next year. Yeah. Ne- next year on the Game Awards is going to be phenomenal. I feel like the Game Awards this year, I feel like this upcoming year is going to be a little bit on the weaker side, similar to the 2019 Game Awards. I feel like 2019 was a, a weak year in gaming, in my opinion. 2020 was set to be a great year, but then obviously COVID happened. Um, and this year's been solid so far. Uh, it just looks like we're going to have a, a weak fall is the only thing. Like, there's going to be some 
there's going to be some great games with, you know, Halo Infinite, of course, Metroid Dread, and Pokemon being some ones that's going to kind of lead the way that I feel like personally. Um, but I do feel like it's going to be a weaker fall. But, I mean, it's, it sucks for Horizon, but at the same time, we want the game to be great, right? We don't want it to come out cyberpunked. Yes. <laughs> I think that's how it's just going to be referred to now is cyberpunked. I feel like that's a good way to put it. Um, but, I mean, that does finish it up here for our, our show and everything we had to talk about. Um, Zach, do you have any last little, like, tidbits involving anything we talked about before we get out of here? I mean, you know what could really keep those PS5s going? What? If they put Ace Attorney on there. Hell Chronicles. yeah. Dude, <laughs> you're damn right. <laughs> hey, sales on that are already pretty good from what I've seen. So, yeah, you're man. right. Keep it from collecting dust. But, hey, I mean, <laughs> that's true. not a whole lot we can do about that that's now. That's true. But, that's true. Um, if it, y'all would, like, comment, subscribe, rate, whatever your platform allows. If you are watching this on YouTube and like what's going on, you can hit that subscribe. And if you really like what's going on, you can then hit that bell to notify you when any one of our videos or clips pops up on our days we release. And you can do that at YouTube.com slash Sparky3. Man, that just sounds so nice to say, to hear him say, you know, that we have our own URL. I love it. That's fantastic. Thank you for everyone that subscribed here recently. And thank you for watching this episode. If you made it all the way in, you're absolutely fantastic in our book. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this episode. Hopefully, you guys uh, enjoyed episode 50. If you have not seen episode 50 yet, definitely go watch it. Go listen to it, whatever. I, I think it's a really good watch. I think it's a great listen. A lot of great games on that list. A couple games that I've never played that I want to check out. Enslaved Odyssey of the West is now on my wish list on Steam. I'm going to pick that up at some <laughs> point. I love Journey of the West stuff, so I'm here for that. But hopefully, you guys have an absolutely phenomenal day. Uh, you know, 2022 set to be a great year you know we'll see how it goes for the rest of this fall but until next time guys see you later bye